Hi, my loves. Joy and Melita Girl from Around the Way, where we have culture, conversation, and community. And in today's video, I'm coming to you all with some commentary about the Tyler Breakfast Club interview and the Charlemagne, uh, the God's commentary on it after it was done. Now, um, I wanted to talk about this before, but um, the moment kind of slipped past. And I was like, you know what? All of the, you know, everybody else has already touched on it. I ain't going to touch too much on it, but. I really wanted to speak on this because honestly, for me, I thought it was weird. I really did when she, when I watched it, um, I thought it was really weird that she couldn't answer a very simple, uh, basic question. Um, and really, I feel like Charlemagne gave her an alley-oop to talk to their audience about what it means to be from South Africa and a colored woman. Now, before I get into my commentary, y'all, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Shout out to all the new subscribers here. Hey, Buki. I really appreciate y'all. So <clears throat> I don't know why every time I start recording, here go this post nasal drip, like girl, <laughs> not today, Satan. We're gonna push through. So listen, y'all. Um, Tyler goes to the Breakfast Club, and we all know she is um a pretty girl from Joe Berg, and, and is what they prefer. I mean, I'm going to be honest here and say that I was feeling Tyler. You know what I'm saying? And I still am feeling Tyler. She's a young girl. She's 22 years old. She came in this game by storm. Some people were saying that she's an industry plant <laughs> just by how, how quick um, how quick she grew to, you know, the fame and to stardom. And now listen, you know, let's be for real. This girl is talented. Okay. She is talented. She is, her voice is beautiful. She can dance. She is um, really like a, a, a real threat to some of the young girls who are coming up in, a, in the singing game right now. I feel like she's one of the, you know, I don't want to say R&B, but pop girls who really can do a little me, 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 me. Like she got it on a vocal sister. Okay. And she goes to the breakfast club and she's having this, you know, really engaging conversation with Charlemagne. And, you know, I feel like he's the only one that really adds to any type of interview that they've been doing lately. I mean, just hilarious. Love you down sister. But um, anyway, in, in DJ Envy, we can't really um, expect too much anyway, but yeah, she goes and she's talking about, you know, I'm from South Africa, you know, and I wanted to share my culture and, you know, my heritage and, you know, the beauty and, you know, all of these things. And and I'm and I'm phrasing this and I'm shaping this because um, when asked about the question about her, he's like, you know, well, what's this? You know, can you school us? Is how he framed the question. School us on this thing about you being colored. And Tyla looks back at her manager and she's like, oh, we're not going to talk about this. We're not going to discuss this. And she looks back over at Charlemagne with the eye like, well, you heard what the lady has said. And Charlemagne's like, oh, we're going to keep this. This is good. And I, I could tell that the energy shifted and it was a little bit awkward for her. And, you know, I think that as a woman, that's unfortunate. I, and, and I can see she's a young woman. You know, this is something that is, you know, relatively new to her and navigating these spaces. Um, you know, these cultural differences and everything. But honestly, y'all, um, you know, after the, I don't want to say backlash or the discussion that was around how she identifies as a woman, she po she posted, you know, hey guys, I'm, you know, from South Africa. I'm, I'm colored here. And, you know, I am, you know, Mauritian and French and, and Zulu and all of these different things. And I am, a, you know, a black woman after all of those things is what she said. Now, um, I think that that at this point for me, it kind of fell on Def's ears for me. Um, for me, it did because it's like, girl, you couldn't have said that, that quick little, uh, iPhone note you had, um, popped in, um, you know, up on the Instagram, you couldn't have just said that at that moment. You get what I'm saying? You could not have just said that at that moment. I know that that's a lot of African creators, on YouTube talking about how ignorant black Americans are, how rude Americans are, and they don't, we don't understand race relations and we don't get it and blackness and you black Americans, y'all are so ignorant and you got like, you know, come on that. I, I feel like that was arrogant because, you know, even, even let's just say a lot of people don't understand how race and, and heritage works outside of the country. Um, this was Tyler's opportunity to educate, 
You know, it, it really was. And a lot of people are of the knowledge. I like, go, oh, I'm an artist. I, I've stopped my responsibility to come around and, and teach people, which to a degree I, I do, I do um, relate to. But however, she is a budding star. She's rising to fame. And this is a part of, you know, earning your stripes. In addition to teaching people about your heritage. Now, she's talked about this in the past, so I don't understand why at the Breakfast Club, for some reason, she decided and her team decided that um, she did not want to discuss it. You had already been talking about your heritage in South Africa and, you know, how it has shaped and formed you. Why would it have been so difficult to say, hey, well, in South Africa, you know, I'm considered colored. You know what I'm saying? Because of the, you know, the colonization and how things were played out. I would, I, you know, the, they're, they um, classify people differently. And this is a classification I follow, you know what I mean? Because this is the country that I'm from. You know, if, if we're going to go to American standards, I would be considered mixed race. She could have just said, you know what I mean? But I identify as black. There's, a, there's a, tons of people who are mixed race who identify as black. And there are tons of biracial people who, or let's just say multiracial people who identify as multiracial. She could have easily cleared that. Cleared. Okay, cool. You know, let's go. So after the, the awkward situation, people took to Twitter. A lot of Africans were like, oh, black Americans are so stupid. Y'all think of race in one simple way. And it's like, okay, I do agree that there are some people who are unaware. Give give her up, you know, clear it up, sister. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you're here for the interview. You're, you're selling your brand and your product. Let's learn more about you. So here is what um, Charlemagne had to say. Let's get into the way. His Personal, answer. you know, really serious, something I know is traumatizing, I'll be like, sure, I'll oblige. For this one, I said no. Yeah. And the reason I said no, they had six things they didn't want us to ask. You want to know what those six things were? Yeah. They didn't want us to ask about Kai Sinat, <laughs> the whole we friends though thing. Yeah. Right? Like, huh? Okay. They didn't want to ask, they didn't want us to ask She's about uh, her not being on tour with Chris Brown anymore. They didn't want us that ask about the color thing. Injury. They didn't want us to ask about her injury that she sustained. What else was it? They didn't want to ask us about who she was dating, which I wouldn't do anyway. And what was the other one? It was one so it was fr it was just all frivolous and stuff. And why? What are they trying to do? They're trying to protect an image that they're I, curating for her. I have no idea. And that's why I said. Oh, but the Rihanna then compared. So here you see Charlemagne explaining what his thought process was and why he decided to just ask her. You know, and I think that. Um, they have had Trevor Noah at the Breakfast Club, and he is an eloquent speaker and comedian and all of these things, and he has the language to express. And I feel like, you know, the team should have better prepared her for that conversation, period, point blank. And the fact that you did not um, outright just say, yes, I'm colored by the standard of, you know, South African classification. However, I understand that that word may be offensive in the States meaning, you know, America, but from where I'm from, it's just a matter of that's how, that's just what we call it, you know? And I guess in my, in my standards, I mean, from an American standpoint, I consider myself to be mixed race. However, I identify as black Zulu, whatever, like she said in the, in the iPhone note, <laughs> what was so hard about that? Okay. And then it's like, Oh, Charlemagne was wrong for acting. No, he was not. He said that he's a he's a, he is not, not a journalist. <laughs> OK, <laughs> I'm a journalist. Shout out to Portia. Um, but we expect Charlemagne to ask heavy hitting questions. Now, it does hurt for optics because she is a 22 year old girl who, you know, looked like a deer caught in headlights. But that's not her fault. It was the team's fault. It took it took the team nothing to just say, hey, no, we're not going to talk about that. The moment that y'all did, y'all could have just like here, Tyler, this is what we're going to say. And also to Tyler, like. Don't let your, your team come across and, and, and dictate what you're going to do. You could have easily explained that, sister. It's not like we don't know what apartheid is. You get what I'm saying? We may not understand colored and, you know, how um, the British and the people from the Netherlands classified you all during um, the creation of apartheid. But um, that's basically what it, what it stems from. OK, so like I think that could have been an easy fix, but I but because and because that was so easy and she did not correct it. It's making me and my homegirls feel like she is leaning into the fact that she is ambiguous. Because what was so hard about that? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? What was so hard about girl? Well, back home, they consider me colored here. I would probably go by mixed by mixed race. 
but I'm black. I identify as black, but you know, whatever, whatever she said in that little, in that little, um, note. And the fact that she hesitated, not even hesitated. She looks nervous, looked back at a girl who, if it me or did she sound like she was a regular girl from around the way? <laughs> she's she ain't sound. I ain't hear not, not an ounce of South African accent on that hoe. So you knew what you was walking that talent into, and you didn't prepare her. And now the optics look like, girl, you don't want to really be associated with you blacks, okay? And and it's no different than a simple explanation like you know how we're in America, y'all. In America, you know I'm two hundred and plus pounds working on y'all. I've been working out at the gym. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. But um, yeah. I'm 200 pounds in America. You know, if I were move, if I were to move to Europe, I would I would be 87 kilograms or whatever the fuck the conversion is. You know what I'm saying? Like it's simple as that. Here, I'm this way. I'm 200. I'm, we measure it in pounds. Over there, we measure measure it in kilograms. Like, what is so hard about that? I think that this notion that Black Americans can't understand the the, the different race dynamics and this like that's some bullshit. That's not for real. You know, and and just to get a little bit into apartheid, you know, this was a system that was studied. Okay, so the people who, the group of people who were in power, um, decided to study American racism, America South Jim Crow laws, and coupled it with Nazi Germany, and then thus they created the apartheid, which um, classified people by you know Dutch or you know, Africans, which was the mixed rate, the mixed white people who came over and colonized. And then you had the other black people and then the Zulu and then, you know, all of the different tribes. But then there was a colored uh, population because there was a lot of Indian people who were there or the people who were white and mixed with black people. And surely, you know, they felt like because they had white in them, they didn't have that same um, status as a black person. OK, because they had the white blood, so white blood in them. And in America, we have a one drop rule in America. It's like, girl, if you got an ounce of black in you, you black over there in their system. It was like, well, if you are have some white in you, you still get an elevated status. That's the only difference. I explained that in two point five seconds, y'all. And, and here's the thing. When you when you when you go into a space of opening yourself up um, to the public. You you are open to critique, you know, you are open to critique. So this whole idea of, oh, well, you know, black America doesn't understand and this, that, and the third, they should have prepared her because now we're looking at you a little sideways, sister. I mean, at least I am. Do y'all feel where I'm coming from? Did you feel a type of way? Drop a heart in the comment if you, if you felt like, hmm, that's funny. And it's not like America didn't know about the apartheid. We understood what was happening when they became, you know, colored. And why? Most people do. It, it was just in the 90s. A lot of Americans were protesting against it. Okay. And at the same time, we were dealing with our own civil rights issue. That's not hard. It's very basic. So why didn't she just outright say, girl, yeah, well, I'm colored there. Here I will be whatever. And I, this is how I identify. But mainly I identify as an artist. You feel what I'm saying? She could have cleaned that up so cute and witty and quick and pretty. But the fact that she did it is making me feel like you want to stay digestible for larger audiences, okay? Because for real, for real, we put a high ponytail on this girl. She could pass her motherfucking Ariana Grande. Just imagine. Slick back high ponytail Ariana Grande. And she's leaning into that. Or maybe she doesn't even realize that that's what her team is pushing, right? But at a 22-year-old woman, you need to be accountable for yourself, especially if you are a public figure, because baby, we're all watching. You know, when you open yourself up as an artist or creator or whatever, and you put your art into this public forum, then you should be um, knowing that there's going to be some critique. And I feel like that was such an easy, that was such an easy thing for her to say. That was not hard. And the fact that she was like, didn't even respond. I'm side eyeing. I don't know. What y'all think? But I'm also too, I identify as a pan-Africanist. You know what I mean? That is kind of like how I feel about things. You know, I'm not into the diaspora wars and all of this. Like, you know, what's up? You know what I mean? But every I understand that everybody doesn't identify like that. And that's cool too. So I want to know what you think. I don't think that Charlemagne was wrong for doing his job. I think that her team was not doing their job. And Tyler, wherever you are under the sound of my voice, baby, it sounds like you need a new team or at least understand the different markets that you're in. It's no different than what I'm what I'm saying here on YouTube 
it's not going to work on TikTok. And what's working on TikTok is not going to translate over onto Instagram. And her manager should have said, okay, this is how we're going to do our interviews in South Africa. I'm sure she's, you know, they speak the language, you know, whatever is, you know, more comfortable. So let me prep her for this different market. They did not do that. She hesitated. And now I'm looking at you like, girl, what you don't, what, what, what is it given? And don't give me, we, we don't, y'all, black Americans don't understand race. Don't, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Sister, we understand. Okay. It may be different here, but essentially the idea is the same. Okay. White people come over, colonize, or in our case, you know, human traffic, you know, systematic, you know, systemic oppression. And then now we're, 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 we're tight. We're different casts. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you know, you're in this category, you're in this category, the house nigga, the, the field nigga, like it's no difference. It's a classification period. That's simple. Easy, easy math. Let me know what you think, y'all. Drop down in the comments. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.